No Woody this week. Um, but uh, I don't want to tell you guys what happened to Woody, but there was an incident on the trip. The trip did not go as planned. It's pretty bad. Woody will tell you next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I thank you gentlemen both for coming on the show and filling in. Um, yeah, thank you always, always I, fun. Always I, fun. I, I, I told you two what happened to Woody, um, but um, what befell him, as it were. So I'd appreciate it if you kept that mum. Um, Next time on PKA, sure. but he's he's not. So here's the thing: Can you text me Woody's number, Kyle? Because yeah. he's you guys need to hear it for the show next week. But I'm gonna call him tomorrow because I really want to know what happened. Well, I, I we'll mean, text you his number and you can give him a ring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't I don't need to wait. Hopefully he'll he'll tell me that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's really crazy. Um. And yeah, thanks for having oh. me. Show, by the way, so something that people have been wanting to hear desperately, I've been getting. I'm sure Kyle has been getting it as well. Uh, there's a loud dog, over there, but uh, Woody was in an accident, and everybody's been asking me what the hell's going on. And I've been honestly saying I have no idea. Woody did not tell Kyle or I what's going on. We have no clue. So these are genuine reactions to to the thing. Yeah. So the trip started out well enough. The mission was to go from North Carolina via roads to Colorado, and then dirt roads up the Rocky Mountains across Colorado and Wyoming. This is like 2,000 miles-ish. And then roads back home. That's not how it went out. If you guys remember me, <laughs> right before I was like, dude, I'm watching all these, um, like the, the people who choose these roads, who mm -hmm. like lay out the back road discovery route, that's what it's called. They all had medical emergencies in their promotional videos. And I'm like, maybe we'll get one. Well, my dream came true. Uh, <laughs> so that's my bone. Uh, Zach, can you zoom in on the right? It's the smaller bone. That It's called the fibula. And uh, Hey, Slush, we're getting some noise from a dog. Oh, uh, sorry. There it is. So the smaller one that's off to the side, do you see how it has that like horizontal sort of division? That's supposed to be one bone. That That's where the break is. Yeah, so it's not like a fake thing or whatever. And if you look Wait, at it... The, 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 sorry, that... So, of course, there's the big split across the big bone. I don't even know what that is. The tibula and the foot bone. Fibula? The fibula is the little one to the side. Yeah. Zach is pointing it out well. That break doesn't belong there. And you can't see from this angle, but the bottom part isn't quite on right. Like, it, it's, it's good enough. We're not going to operate, probably. But um, he gave me the option. He's like, you know, I could go in there. I could put some screws here and here. I could put a plate on the side. That's what my other leg looks like. And it's not awesome to have hardware in your leg. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. You throw in like a ski boot and all of a sudden it clamps against the screws and it's uncomfortable and painful and shit. TSA. No, I, I go right through the, the metal yeah. detectors. I, I think it's titanium and that's why, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So what they did instead is put me in a cast here. Uh, Zach, can I full screen? We got this guy going on. Look how big they had to make the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need more paper mache. Smuggle of hands, man. So, uh, so they put my my foot in the cat. It was a bit of a thing. I got out there. Well, there's this iron butt challenge where you do a thousand miles in a day. I did over eleven hundred. I crushed it. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna qualify as an iron butt person. The first person ever to do it on my model motorcycle. I was excited about that. Nice. This is not a thing that people give a shit about, but I do, and I was excited. I, I I did my I hit my goal. I had some trouble with the bike. The front brake kept locking up hard. Happened three times, and it's like this is dangerous. So I got separated from my group. And I had to catch them, right? So they're on off-road. I, I drop in. I don't want to miss any mountain passes or any fun of the experience. And I'm in pursuit mode, right? I'm going to catch these guys, chase them down. And I did. I did. I caught all my friends. I was like, I couldn't believe I did it. Like, I, I thought I was going to be a day and a half behind them. But I got on my horse. I called everyone. And now I'm leading. I don't want to pump my tires too much well i'm injured so no one's gonna think i'm too good <laughs> but uh, when the off-road section gets really technical right like the mm -hmm. the harder it is to get through it the better i do when it's easy the worse i do because then they start going really fast and i'm not as fast as them I'm not as fast as them on the street or on like i don't know how to say paved dirt road but like you know really well manicured dirt road mm -hmm. i get my ass kicked but when it's really rough and bumpy and there's big rocks and shit I'm usually the fastest guy. I mean, it might be my bike, but whatever. 
Um, this is where my attitude went wrong. <laughs> I had been, you know, leading the pack, having a blast, hitting jumps all day long, just rocketing that thing in the air, and and I I was really feeling it. You know, you weight shift well and stuff when you're on top of your game. And I hit, there was this like rock formation that looked like a really cool jump. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> jump number 932. Here we come. We're going to get a catch air again. Everything's been coming up, Woody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just keep going. The other side wasn't I expected. I didn't look before I leapt. And on the downside was a hole. And what's important is like, like say your bike just sort of jumps in an arc. If it's flat or downhill on the other side, I'm happy. But because it's a hole, I kind of jumped into the arc and hit the upward side. Yeah. Which is to say, at my angle, I crashed into a wall. And uh, <sighs> that went poorly. Um, uh, my face like slammed into the bike's windshield, which was no trouble because I have a full face helmet. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of like not driving this thing for eight seconds, ten seconds. It was enough to lose control. And uh, you mean like you just hit so hard you were stunned, like not stunned, and, and maybe my hands came off the handlebars. Like I tried mm -hmm. to save it, like I tried to keep my chest on the tank and get back in position, but I didn't succeed. And mm -hmm. eventually, I fell over to the side. My bike landed on my right foot, and my toe pointed towards the back tire. Oh no! Yeah, and I had some pretty protective boots on, but broken fibula. High ankle sprain, for those of you who, who know medical stuff. And now I have a problem, because I'm like two hours deep in the woods, in the Rocky Mountains, 2,000 miles from home, on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And I've got to, like, get all this solved. The boys are camping at night, and I'm supposed to camp too, but I was like, guys, excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to get a <laughs> hotel, find some ice, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. even that was a challenge. Lake City, Colorado is such a small place literally no one had rooms nobody and i'm just like sitting in a hotel with no vacancy like a motel that's talking sucks. calling etc and a guy who owns it or works there is like are you in trouble and i'm like well i i think i broke my leg and i don't have any place to stay and i'm just sorting that out now and he's like we have an emergency room for people like you if you want it and i was like fuck <laughs> <laughs> And and really, my thought, my my first impression was, well, I don't want to impose. Like that was my like, like my knee jerk reaction. Like, well, I'll sort this out myself. I don't need your emergency room. <laughs> then he told me it was sixty five dollars a day. <laughs> 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 so I got the hell out of there. <laughs> uh, it was like, you know what? Actually, yeah, I do have a broken leg, and and I like maybe this warrants using this empty room he keeps for people mm -hmm. who get hurt. And. Uh, you know, then everything started going well for me. There was a restaurant that didn't deliver. I called them up and I was like, you know, you got anyone there? They were a block away, one block. I was like, I'll tip a guy $20 if he just walks the food over. And they're like, we don't deliver. And I'm like, I really need you to. <laughs> I really need you to. I, I am laid up. I, I, I can't walk. I'm really hungry. I haven't eaten today. Uh, you know, I'm like, maybe you got oh, no. a guy that, I, I, that we're about to close. I was like, maybe you got a guy there who after closing, you know, Wants to earn twenty dollars in two minutes, like, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's what happened. So you know, they brought me a big bag of ice and stuff. That they, they took good care of me. Staff there was like, hey, they gave me a ride to the medical center. It was half a mile, but I was really appreciative. And um, Ooh, nice people. I got my X rays, and that's when I learned it was broken. And uh, it wasn't the news I wanted to hear, but um, yeah. Anyway, so Zach, can you pull some more pictures up? We've got some. Got some foot pics for you perverts out there. Yes, I'd love to see more foot pics. That is so. What is uh, the total amount of time you can't like put weight on it, do anything? Mm. Like, what are you laid up for? So I'm in the cast for two weeks, and uh, with that, I can't put weight on it at all. I am cleared to lift weights, so I can move around. I'll start that again tomorrow. That's way less time than I thought you'd say. Two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Well, after the cast comes a boot, and with that, like. He's like, you know, you put the foot on the ground, pretend you're walking on eggs that you're trying not to break. So it like you still use crutches, mm -hmm. but you're starting to put your foot through the through the motions of walking on it and adding more weight. And then probably somewhere around six to eight weeks, I'm in a normal shoe. So that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah this fibula break is not too bad. It turns out the tibula, which is the bigger one in the x-ray picture, does all the load bearing. And the fibula oh. is about stability. 
Mm. And, you know, you put it in a cast or a boot and you can fake that while it heals. Was it really one of those breaks where, like, it wasn't that painful? It was just it shocking? Hurt. It hurts and then more it... now. Yeah. It, sorry, I cut you off. But, yeah, people are like, what's your pain level? What's your pain level? I'm like, zero. This is, like, something really? guarding. Like, imagine you hurt your shoulder really bad. You might mm-hmm. carry it like this, you know, and mm-hmm. you hold your own wrist and put it across your body. That That's known as guarding. And something about my broken leg made me want to guard it. It made me know to not walk on it very much, not do, like, the kind of side-to-side pivots a basketball player would do. Mm-hmm. Nothing like that. But if you just wanted to stand on it through the heel, I mean, I did that on my motorcycle for two hours through the dirt roads, getting back to civilization. And it was pretty much okay. Um, but... Now that like things have sort of settled and maybe sensations coming back and stuff like it hurts more. It hurts more when um, it throbs and bothers me when I'm not elevating it and stuff like that. Mm. But I uh, I found it really hard when uh, I I broke mine when I was like 19 and trying to ride my motorbike. I couldn't like move my foot up and down. So Mm. like to change gears, I had to like pull out my boot and then hook my heel onto like the onto the gear selector and like jingle it up and down. <laughs> was, this was yeah. to get home or you did that for like a little while? Uh, no, cause I, um, I broke it when I was out drunk. So I stepped off a footpath <laughs> and I, um, it was higher than I thought and I rolled it and I broke pretty much the same bone as you as, as far as I remember. And, uh, it was just like a little hairline fracture. Just a couple of adrenaline up. junkies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, We're yeah, in the bad piece, decision piece team. Fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. Mine, mine like swelled up like massive. And then mm-hmm. the next day I was at my friend's house and I couldn't get home without riding my motorbike. So I'm trying to ride it with a broken ankle. And I'm like, yeah, that's good <laughs> yeah. mine swollen too nice. by a lot. I had pictures, but Zach's not bringing them up, but, um, yeah. And it's, and one's purple and one's white those things but yeah yeah maybe I, did i give him a bad link let me see oh, he says he doesn't nope. have them yet he needs so to so does this discourage you in any way from future motorcycling pursuits across these this great 50 <laughs> states no. there's no of course way not would. right not Wait, at I, all I, I i i bought you something today I'm, i i need you to send me your address i asked for it earlier um to, to put on your wall it'll be fun i it, i feel like it i feel like it's you Okay. <laughs> I found a poster thing. Um, yeah, I didn't think it would discourage you at all. Um, I, I can imagine Jackie's reaction is being like, again, huh? All right, well, you okay? <laughs> Sounds good. See you soon. <laughs> yeah, I imagine she'd be like, oh, only two weeks? Oh, that hardly noticeable. Like, <laughs> our leading. Oh, my goodness. Is that Wings uh, foot? <laughs> I wish you hadn't said wings because I was going to say it looks like a really obese person's foot. It's too zoomed in. I don't know. Potato, but, uh, potato. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what mine look like. Yeah. <laughs> it is so it's swollen good. in there. And Oof. that must that must have been in Colorado uh, looking at the carpet. Yeah, that was yeah, the did it go like, me up did it go like really black like uh, overnight? Yeah. Oh, I, I, so I the bad foot is back. The... Now, are we back home here? Mm, yeah, that's my guest bathroom okay. tile. I was gonna that's say, the that's tile a... that I lay on when I'm hungover. <laughs> I, I saw that yeah. tile. I was like, that is not motel tile. No, that's heat seeking tile. <laughs> from from <laughs> Woody's <laughs> drunk face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we do a drinking episode and I put my face on the tile and thank it for its cool flip. <laughs> it feels so good. <laughs> that's the tile. That's the tile. But yeah, uh, but yeah it's oddly weird color. Yeah, so it's it just swollen still look blood, like right? You know, doing its healing thing. And that's the cast. So. Did you pick blue, or is that what they had? They had a bunch of colors. I picked this color. I like. Do you blue. think? Uh, have you ever seen people with those rainbow ones? Yeah. Is that ah. that's a patterned strip, right? You're not like signing up the nurse to like do an art project, are you? <laughs> Cause, cause Don't cause think really I wasn't rude. looking at the girl colors. I'm like, wait, they have yellow. When I was in high school, I got fuchsia as a as a cast once, and I'm like, what do you just? Back off the femininity for a little bit. <laughs> just, yeah. just for, if you could be masculine for just a few seconds, you'll be grateful for the next two yeah. weeks. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, I don't know. Gray. <laughs> Something. Give me camo. <laughs> there we go. That to yeah. me looks like they used a bunch of different colors. Yeah. See, I, I don't see like colors, any transitions. That's that's a little rude. <laughs> really? Uh, it, like they've got other people to be taping up, uh, and you're yeah. asking for custom colors. I, really like I, 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 I think I want my money's worth. <laughs> I'm glad you like them. Yeah, I work so hard. <laughs> it is festive, yeah. you know. That's uh, nice. So yeah, yeah, then I um I had to get myself home. I rode my motorcycle a few hours to a small town, and I called a shipper 
And there are motorcycle shipping companies for a thousand dollars. They're sent. They're bringing the bike home. It should be here tomorrow. I hope. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and then I flew myself home. Well. I flew commercial. <laughs> yeah. fly my cell phone. Get out of the way, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> I've got this one. Uh, I'm not going to let this be a total worry, loss of a vacation. I stayed in an emergency <laughs> holiday. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to get some more adrenaline on the way home to make up for it. We're going to do loops the entire way home. Just <laughs> <laughs> right, we got to get some roll. adrenaline so before was, I get home. Um, what was like the percentage of the trip you had completed at the time? <laughs> of the trip? It's like like so half little. of it, like a third of it. It depends whether you count the drive out there as part of the trip. There were kind of three legs, like out there, dirt, and back. But it was literally the first dirt day that I did. Oh, okay. damn. How it, many days did you meant to be out there? How many day, dirt days? Like 14, something like that. Well, I'm so, 14, and you injured yourself in like the first two hours. I was so gutted. Like, you don't understand. Yeah. Like, I've you kind of so been stoked on this. I've been. Yeah. You know, actively focusing on my mental health lately, right? Like, let's get some exercise, some sunshine, some sense of accomplishment, time with friends, like the the sort of shit that makes you feel better in, in the mental health realm. And and this trip had all of that, like the accomplishments, the friends, the sunshine, the, the physical activity, outdoors. Like, I had so much pegged on this thing making me happy. And it, it did quite the opposite. I was so <laughs> gutted. There was a moment... So I'm trying to fly home and I ride my motorcycle like two hours and I go to the airport, the Gunnison, Colorado airport. It's this tiny regional little thing. And I, I've got my confirmation number on the phone and I go to check myself in. And uh, it says that it can't check me in if I'm not within 24 hours of my flight date. I'm like, the fuck? I'm like 90 minutes from my flight date. Like, what is the problem here? So, um, so I, I actually find this lady, she seems like she'd be nice. She just looked nice. And I'm like, this font on my phone is so small. What's the flight date? And she's like, she struggled a little August 18th. And I'm like, what's your level of confidence? Like, are you sure <laughs> I booked my flight home for August 18th? And she looked again and she's like, Yes, you did. <laughs> and so <laughs> I call United and I get this guy with a really frustrating accent. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm working with him, right? And I'm like, you know, can you get me on this flight? There's seats on this flight. You can go online and buy this flight now. Please just transfer mm -hmm. me to the right flight. Please just do this for me. And um, he's like, all right, let me see what I can do. And he's like, no, nah, the flight's too soon. I can't do it. And I'm like, I basically kindly said, like, can I speak to the manager? Is there like anyone? Because there's no physical reason we can't do this. There's no reason mm -hmm. I can't just walk to this plane. And you have to understand the airport's so small. It's smaller than your local Home Depot, right? Like this mm -hmm. is a small airport. I can just walk over there and get on the plane. Like, this should be a doable thing. He bumps it up to the next level of support. They can't do it. And I am now I'm like within an hour of the flight and mm -hmm. I'm like, it's hard to get them to be like, your flight takes off. There's there. That's the Gunnison airport. <laughs> so, uh, fancy. Wow. right. Like, like there's not a lot. It, it, like I mentioned that because if it was Denver, you know, getting from where you park to where your plane is, is an ordeal. Yeah. It's oh. not an ordeal here. This is like finding the freaking pharmacy of your pharmacy section of your CBS. It's, it's right there. Mm -hmm. You just walk to the back. And, um, anyway, I, I gave up on the idea. They were able to cancel the flight, but they weren't able to like get me on the, on the flight. Mm. So I limped back to my motorcycle and oh. I just sat down next to it in the parking space. Oh, and like you cried did you cry a little i'd have cried a little <laughs> i would have I been I so upset. Been upset i probably i would have <laughs> cried too you can open up those i would i was so fucking broken i was like this is everything i didn't want yeah, this is, <laughs> I'm so sorry. you were this so is excited the opposite for this. of what i wanted to be doing today <laughs> oh. <laughs> that so sucks oh, Woody. i'm so sorry <laughs> but in that parking lot you were just like i could see you just broken of like because it's such a 
such a fun thing to look forward to for so long and for it to go so poorly i was i was so sad for you i told my wife when that happened i'm like woody broke his leg and she's like on that trip he just left and i was like yeah i know it's fucking sucks like <laughs> i hope he's okay. it was really hard on me so then i had to spend another night in gunnison and i booked the flight for the next day and then on the the next flight the it's like an hour to denver and then home from denver cool well <laughs> the guy right next to me as he was shutting the overhead bin compartment he broke it and it, it kind of like wiggled a little bit so the pilot is like this plane can't fly with a broken overhead bin <laughs> no way <laughs> was that like an integral structural part of the brain <laughs> home or something like where's yeah. the gas hold <laughs> and he's like don't worry about it there's a little buffer built into the schedule we'll have a maintenance guy come out and do whatever and I'm just like is this your first time dealing with like airline maintenance they're not going to be quick this is going to be a whole thing <laughs> and uh, anyway long story short the guy took like 90 minutes and then he gets there and he can't remove the fucking thing. Like it, it, I don't mean to be an asshole, but like I'm stronger this guy and he can't work the screws. He can't undo it. He eventually pulls out a fucking multi-tool and he's struggling. He's struggling. He's trying to fix this fucking airplane with his multi-tool and get the, the thing on. <laughs> and I, I wanted to scooch him aside. I'm like, <laughs> like I, I, I could have a multi-tool. I could do this job better than you. And you're like airline <laughs> maintenance. And um, uh, you didn't get, I got confused. Anyway, so uh, eventually the guy manages to remove the door and I miss my connecting flight. What? In Denver. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> and, and let me clarify. The, the man who fucked up the thing is your seatmate. No, he was across the island behind me. Okay. Um, now, was there I think any, I would have slapped like, him. <laughs> was anybody giving him a hard time or did he apologize in any way? So he broke it by perhaps shutting it too aggressively. Like, I think his luggage stuck out a bit. Yeah, it did. And his, his goal was to force it closed. Of course. And he didn't realize it would break at the hinge. And I saw him do it. And I saw the stewardess be like, you know, like a little like, ooh, you just broke the plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, somehow I was, I don't know how it came up or something, but he's like, you were not launching because of this. And like I'm the one that broke it. And I was like, I know I saw you break it. Like I, I wasn't going to out him, you know, oh, like I'd, every... I'd have been like the guy in 13, a broke, <laughs> the, broke the shit and delayed the plane, pass it forward. <laughs> yeah, I was going to keep his secret for him. I wasn't looking. No, to we're like... going to mute me on him. We're yeah. coming... <laughs> he's got to start the plan. Is anyone going to screw drama? <laughs> So I'm like, I'm gonna gonna fix the plane. Now we're gonna stab this guy. <laughs> I was, take out a multi tool and end up in Guantanamo. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get a refund for that flight, which they wouldn't do. They're like, you, we can't refund this flight, and I'm like, what? Well, you missed the connection. It's your fault. I would like, why do I have to buy this flight? So I ended up buying that flight, which I couldn't take from Denver to Raleigh, and then another flight via Southwest, which I did take from Denver to Raleigh, and that's how I got home later that day. And uh, so, it was just like, this is so hard. <laughs> you know? If there wasn't a record-breaking heat wave across, like, Kansas and Kentucky, I might have rode my bike home. But I was like, this just doesn't seem like the move. And imagine, most of the time I stop my bike, more. I put my left foot down, which is my good foot. Mm. But imagine it doesn't go that way. Imagine, you know, you just tip into the right a little bit and use the other foot. Happens every 50th time. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to catch my mm. bike tipping over with my broken leg or pick it up off the ground with one leg. Like, none of this is the move. I should just ship it home. Smart. So uh, no, I kept, my father told me once, life's serious problems are medical and emotional. Everything else you can solve with money. And that sounds like, oh, easy to say when you have money. But no, it's still true. Like, even if you're not rich and you crash your car, 18 months later... It's just a part of your history. Like you've, you've got a new car by then. Like you're back on your feet, probably. <laughs> and I'm just like, this sucks, but this is a good opportunity to throw money at your problems. Like let's hire a fucking motorcycle shipper. Let's get another airplane ticket. Let's do whatever. Um, that was my mindset. Like just get me home. I'm tired of being yeah. alone and hurt. It's like 
it wouldn't like the story itself, like the injury plus like all of those catches trying to get home. I don't think that would have been as devastating, except you had that like imagined anchor point of this is going to be wild. And so the disparateness of like, this is going to be the most fun thing ever to like, what the rides are closed. Like basically <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just would shatter me. It, it, it would be like going to like Disney world and they're like, it, it's all, everyone's on strike, but guess what? The broccoli gardens open. No! <laughs> the gap Remember, between what like, I needed, what like, I expected and what I got. Is such so, a gap. That's, the whole, uh, that's the whole premise to national lampoons vacation. Uh, Chevy yeah. Chase travels the whole fucking country, goes through all those hardships, gets to Wally world with his whole family, Chicago, <laughs> to los angeles i think it was and they're closed for maintenance he pulls out a fucking gun he's like no we're riding the rides <laughs> that, that happened to me i uh put your hands up to, to <laughs> uh france and i was like i really want to see the um the fucking like architecture on the whatever it was called i can't i the the fucking church that burnt down in um in france no no Notre Dame, yeah, yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, that's it's it's really beautiful, and I booked a hotel like across the road, like you can look out the window at the front of the fucking Notre Dame, and I had everything going, and then like a week before we went there, it burned down. I was like, <laughs> <"Fuck off." laughs> like gotta... it survived yeah. for literally like twelve hundred yeah. years, yeah. <laughs> and then it burned down the like week the week before, before I went. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, fuck you. Did they, did they put it back together? Did they build it back? Uh, up? The front facade was still there, but they, uh, they, I think they're still working on like the actual structural part of the building. But because of that, they'd close like that entire island on the CN, and so it was just like there's just armed police everywhere, and and uh, oh, they were and you in the process to... of remodeling anyway. Eh? Look at the scaffolding. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, oh, they, someone someone plugged a tool in or some oh, shit or no set a shit. fire That's while they were working it? on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a. Is, it, oh, uh, they, I didn't know they figured it out. Yeah, some like cheap fucking uh, tradesman or some shit like that burnt it down. Mm, but, uh, by plugging in some harbor freight tool. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jesus they do have those weird yeah. voltages over there. It was probably a six hundred volt miter saw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's good. Good. <laughs> so that, that, see that that view there, that that last picture, the hotel that I was staying at was like above that picture. So you could see like the whole thing, like on the left, uh, on, on the left where that uh, where this corner of the street is, I stayed like up above that, like above where the yeah. picture taker is. So you got and to I was like, smell the cathedral. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, <was laughs> yeah but... <laughs> I mean, I guess it was fun to watch the the firefighting like process and all the. Shit oh, no, see, I didn't it. even didn't even get to do that. I was it was over before was a I got week there. late. Oh, you're a week yeah. early. Oh, uh, yeah. Late. All I got was like a bunch of fucking French people protesting because they'd raise money to build it again, and everyone was like, "Why aren't you giving money to poor people?" I'm gonna ask you, did you damage your bike at all, or is it like pretty decent? It's pretty decent. Um, for people that don't know, an adventure bike is kind of meant to be dropped. It's okay. I uh, I ended up ordering $140 worth of new plastic, which okay. had an $80 piece I probably didn't need. But I don't know. There's a balance. Some of the scratches and stuff you see on an adventure bike is adventure bike patina. Look, if you don't have any scratches, you're a fucking pussy who doesn't actually go off road. <laughs> you know, If you don't fall, do some cooler shit, all right? But too many scratches, and you're a guy who doesn't maintain your bike. And I'm like, you know what? You fall a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took the fenders off a long time ago. <laughs> I was like, I, I actually don't like this one scratch. I'm going to spend 80 bucks on the plastic to get it, make it new again. Yeah. Do you have like full bars on the side of it, like those, the guards? So people do, but the bike that I have is different. In, can you pull up a KTM 890 Adventure R, Zach? KTM 890 Adventure R. It's unique in that the gas tank is down low and then yeah. there's like a factory skid plate around it. So it doesn't need it. The engine is surrounded by gas tank. It does so that that so that the center of gravity is extra low and it rides nice. I'm not sure it's super attractive, the low gas tank, like you see it. Yeah. But the reason I don't need bars is that plastic thing in the bottom center forward uh, is what would touch the ground instead of like most bikes where the engine might hit. But if you had those, it would have held the bike up while it was crushing the fuck out of your ankle. Mm, so your leg kind of goes behind that gas tank. Like there was a little yeah. space. My leg, do you see the circle right in like the middle center? Yeah. 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 That's where my foot lived when it was getting uh, twisted backwards and sliding under the bike. Um, that's rough. What I should so have. You go worn... like outwards. So you like 
So you, you leaned and then you put your toe into the ground and then it just dragged it backwards. So, you know, the, the exact mechanism of injury was a little confusing. There was a lot going on at the same time. But I think that my toe was pointed inwards and backwards under the bike where that circle is in the middle center. Okay. So usually, like, uh, you have, like, people, when they fall, their toes pointing outwards and then it sort of gets dragged, like, back around. Um, mm. So yeah, I... Like- that's possible, but when I mentioned how I thought it happened to the, I went to see an orthopedic surgeon today. Uh, he concurred, like the the injury I have is consistent with that, so it pointed inwards and backwards. So, well, I'm glad you didn't uh, get injured more severely. I'm didn't fuck it up it more. Out. Yeah, I could have had it surgical. I really do like propofol, but I don't like the hardware that lives in me afterwards for a long time. Uh, yeah, it's fair. You could go in, get the drugs, and then chicken out of the surgery at the last minute. Sure. Where were you this morning with these? I mean, ideas? to call him up, tell him to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 as soon as he's like fills the IV, go. You know what? I changed my mind. I'm backing out. <laughs> Wait, how what? much of uh, how, how much did this cost you? How much did this set you back? Is, are we uh, talking about like the whole price of the vacation or the injury yeah. or like what? Well, not the just the injury. So the from from injury beginning, like say. If, if you had been further in, you would probably would have had to get like a helicopter lift out or something like nah. that. Like, so um, I would say the two plane tickets, I bought two first class plane tickets to get me home. Um, they weren't too bad, but I think they totaled like $1,200, another 1200 ish to ship the bike home. And medically, like I, I have really expensive insurance and we already met our copay. Oh. So there's nothing there. That's not too bad then. Yeah, so, so, I know, like uh, medical stuff in America, it's like, hey, yeah, no, you, uh, yeah, you broke your toe. Time to go bankrupt. Yeah, yeah. So, so because I pay like thirty grand a year in health insurance, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should fuck yeah. yourself up more often. <laughs> well, you think yeah. I'm gonna waste it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad that all worked out. Then it's a shame about the trip. So, so I gotta ask. Hmm. When will you reattempt the trip? Oh yeah, so I don't think I can ride the bike for. Well, I can't ride the bike cool for like at least eight weeks. I think that's when I'm like maybe free to get released, and uh, that puts us into September, which starts impacting like which trip. Like I wanted to do something called the Northeast Backroad Discovery Route. It goes mm-hmm. from New York to Maine, but dude, September might be chilly for that trip. So there's another one called the Cat the Kentucky adventure trail. Maybe I'll do that in September. And as far as getting out West again, I don't think this, year. I don't know about that one. You yeah. break your leg in Kentucky. You come home with a peg leg. <laughs> really? You think I can yeah. get like an eye patch they have too? Medical care. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, it was, uh, they all, I mean, you know, it was scurvy for sure. <laughs> they actually, um, you might get, we, you might get propofol. It would just be uh bourbon. Drink <laughs> up, boy. It's going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm having some. <laughs> Sword, you Lego. <laughs> yeah. So those are the things I'm looking at. Some closer trails. I don't think the any BDR might not be this year because it'll be chilly. Yeah. It's just a little well, cold. I mean, there's so many trips, though. Like, I bet there's a thing where you go fucking down all the way to the end of Florida. And like, 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 what if you rode the southern seaboard? Is there anything like that? Like, you just... You rot, you go, you stick to the beach and go all the yeah. way around. So there's like, something called the SCAR, the South Carolina Adventure Route. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, generally, you want to hit the mountains. That's where the fun is. And That's some of the places okay. you're describing, like Florida, are not that fun. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking of just like a road trip. We get really, like a, uh, a, a fun motorcycle. I've ride. thought about that too. Like, um, I thought about get getting a, a bagger. A bagger is like maybe you can imagine like a big Harley with the bags behind you next to the rear wheel and top case or like a Honda Goldwing or something like that. Mm -hmm. And just something that's designed to munch 700,000 mile days. And it's kind of neat to be like leave your garage this morning and find yourself in Louisville or something like that or St. Louis. I would I would not want to ride my bike that far, but I would be willing to ride something like like a Mad Max type vehicle, like like, like yeah. that. Car. Like, like it doesn't. What I'm looking for isn't comfort. It's just I don't, I don't like the You're idea. Looking for of danger. Inter- I, like like I don't know. A thousand miles of interstate travel on a bike sounds scary to me. Like like people on the fucking roads. It uh, like it's. I don't need. I don't need them merging into me and and killing mm. me. 
uh, for something that's not even that fun, which is cruising down the highway. Oh, yeah. Like, like I mean, yeah. I have I have one of those. I mean, look, <laughs> mine's yeah, cooler, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You should get one of those, like, uh, Polaris Razors. Those, like, 1200cc, like, turbo fucking uh, ATV things. They just go cruising in that. I've been on one of those uh, in Texas. Uh, they go incredibly fast. Uh, yeah. so 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 fast but but yeah like i would i would totally drive some kind of a mad max vehicle for some kind of a road trip i like that um god i can't believe i can't think of the name of what's the big famous uh famous british show with the cars top gear okay top gear, top gear. yeah like, like i like those challenges nice. when, I, I like those challenges when they would do stuff like have a small budget to get a car and then drive from a to b like i would yeah. like to do something like that it would be really fun to like tinker with a car and be like aha I found a Honda for six hundred dollars. <laughs> it's only got two hundred thousand miles. They're screwed. <laughs> you know, I think that would See, be that fun. would that would be fun. Like I, that would be I fun. enjoy watching those challenges on Top Gear. Like my wife enjoys Top Gear. She's like, oh, that car show. That's so funny because we just watch the like adventure ones where it's like they have four hundred dollars to get from the top of Botswana to the bottom or whatever the fuck it is, and it's like. Cars are just the medium. They're the entertainment. Yeah. You know, it could be about something else. It's just, dude, I don't like the thing. You should do that. Be funny. I, I think I'm you alone on this island that everyone loves Top Gear. Everyone recognizes the charisma of the three hosts. And like, I, I get that. I get that. But watching them take on any challenge and just being so fake, you know, like it, there was one where they had boats. Okay. They crashed that boat into everything you know <laughs> it is not hard to not hit things in a boat it's wide open wide open you have to aim for shit to hit it with your boat yet they did it and they crash like whatever 16 times in a row they sink some person's rowboat and it's like you uh, the what are these jokers doing but it, it's like it. an infomercial where the woman accidentally hits a hammer straight into the wall there was never a nail there that's what top gun is when <laughs> i watch it <laughs> I, I understand but like i like it in that it's like that like punchy british like they're doing jokes like it's not uh, it's not serious you know it's like they're not slapstick. really stuck like, in the because you can tell like when they do the challenges where it tries to be more real, like their desert crossing one, where they went a little more real with it, you mm -hmm. can tell viscerally that they were fucking miserable, like having yeah. a bad time. But then it's just as funny for me watching the ones where it's clearly tongue in cheek, like being silly, like driving what, what across the, the autobahn they, or whatever. They had to drive like uh, through the Middle East in supercars or some shit like that. That was pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, they like did Syria or something. Like, yeah. A, a really they're just like trying area. to get them down these like fucked dirt roads in like Ferraris yeah. and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's a great idea. I can't yeah, remember which of our, one of our car guests a while back. I was I was saying like, what if you made that drive from Kiev to fucking like wherever that Dunbass region where they need the supplies. Oh, you okay. get yourself like a like a Jeep loaded down with MREs and ammunition and you've got to like go through the war zone. <laughs> That's fun. I like it. Super. That's fun. I want to see you do it in like a chrome or maybe me like a chromed out Lamborghini. It'll be like the fuck. Yeah, that'd be sick. <laughs> yeah. You just well, be you like they're gonna one wall rocket. <laughs> yeah. They're not gonna be looking for ice cream trucks. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate. We have these. Uh, we have these bikes in Australia. That's the fucking most wanted link I've ever seen. But they're called posty bikes, and they're like a uh, they're That's like a little link. Honda uh, little Honda didn't work. thing. So what do you? I, I um. I got a text message from you last night. Um, I believe it was last night, and it was it said something like, I "Almost died today." Um, guess it's a good thing I have uh, a second uh, parachute. Um, oh, yeah. Your reply was the greatest. I was like, I "Almost died tonight." It's a good thing I carry two parachutes. And Kyle goes, "Yeah, it's a good thing you didn't." That uh, who died? Uh, oh yeah, the the king of random. Yeah, uh, the, the king of random would have stolen your thunder. That. He has eleven million subs. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah, <laughs> if, if you had died last night, nobody would. No have one would care. No, it. It. <laughs> it would have been nothing. It would even even a blip. He's like uh, the king no. of random. Eleven million subscribers died today in a paramotor incident. Also. It's sunny in Southern California. <laughs> yeah. In other news, Don, how's it going down there on the street? Oh, wonderful. You should skip right over you. You'd have been a footnote. But I, I when did. you die, you need to die all alone. I like yeah. the way you're thinking. Yes. I um, What I did is that I almost died. I hit the ground. 
And within like 60 seconds, I was vlogging about it. And I put it on so we could watch it together. I'm the only one who's seen this. Okay. Um, it's four minutes long, but I think it's kind of interesting. I'll, I'll watch it. I want to see your po post almost. Yeah, uh... yeah. If you could try to turn the camera on a little earlier next time too. <laughs> I, w I had it on <laughs> for the crash, but the battery died. I, I have like the first 20 seconds so of the So clearly run. extra weight, extra parachute, necessary missing weight, extra battery. <laughs> I'd rather see you die than keep you alive. Come on, we need that battery. Are you guys ready for this? I'm yeah, ready to zero. All right, ready, set, play. Oh my god! So this just happened like one minute ago. I thought I'd record while the feeling was fresh. I am 100% okay. It wasn't even that hard a landing, but. I was trying a helico, something I've tried about, I don't know, maybe uh, 75 times before. A risky acro move. And uh, the reason I thought it'd be okay on a motor is like, even if I have a bad helico, it seems to go okay. I find tail slide and it's all cool. A safe exit. But I don't know, maybe it's the extra inertia on the motor, but... I, uh, I didn't keep up with the spin of the heli. So I found myself in a riser twist. Now I've had like a half riser twist, I don't know, 15 times, like 10 times. It's not that big of a deal. But if you imagine yourself on a, uh, on a, um, a swing, like a playground swing, and like the first half twist is really hard to accomplish, then after that, twirl 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 easy and that's kind of what happened and it was like spiraling and the twist was getting worse but i was way up high like 3500 feet which is pretty high when i started this move and uh i was like i've got some time to sort this out i can fix it i can fix it and i really didn't want to throw the reserve which probably is the wrong mindset but uh people I get worked hurt at it and on worked reserve. at it and tried to get it untwisted and I'm like, it's getting worse, not better. And I don't know how many twists I got up to, but you might call it seven. And at one point it started rotating fast. And like, now my wing's not flying. I'm kind of spiraled down, nose down. So I was like, heck with this, you know, I'm throwing the beamer. So I take heck my right hand reserve and I take it and, and I did a good toss. I wish I had it on camera, but I've seen so many tosses and I did once in a SIV course, thanks Gabe. <laughs> and uh, so I pulled it, got a grip on it, and tossed it out wide, and it got tangled in the risers. In and the I'm wing. Like, oh boy! <laughs> if I if I throw this other reserve, I'll have no more reserves. <laughs> but it still seemed like a good idea. So I took my square, which was uh, an Independence Ultra Cross, I think something like that, Ultra Cross for sure, and I uh, left-handed, you know, get it free toss it far and um i didn't actually get a visual on what happened but all of a sudden boom, it pulled me and uh <laughs> and uh, then i knew that well then i didn't know i traded one problem for another I, when i threw a reserve in training i actually hit the water really hard so i was nervous about how rough a ride it would be and I saw myself coming to the ground and you can only estimate it so well. And I was like, I think this is going to be all right. And uh, as I got real close, I was like, I might even try to nail this, like stay on my feet. Well, that wasn't meant to be. I, I kind of hit feet and then cage. And then I found myself laying on my back on the prop. Like a turtle. And I'm like, that wasn't bad. That was okay. So one, I'm really glad I had two reserves. If you're going to do... If you're going to make questionable decisions, you got to have two reserves. And uh, two, I guess I'm just glad I'm okay. Here you are. All right. I need, I need like, a, okay, I need a translation. Yeah. Like, Beamer I got about a third of know, that. Maybe two thirds if I'm Maybe really generous. The other one did. <laughs> so what's, okay, a reserve is clearly something when something goes wrong. But why is one reserve better? Why is two better than one? And why do you throw your reserve? What are okay. you doing with that? What does that mean? So paramotoring looks a little like parachuting but you have a fan on your back, a prop, with that propulsion, yeah, you, you can stay going, right? Sure. 
I'm doing this acro move. That so what you're telling me is you have a parachute and a fan. Yes, yeah. It's called okay. a paraglider. It's different in that it's not meant to descend. It's meant to fly. But it looks yeah, okay. like a parachute. Gotcha. And I have a prop on my back. And with that, yeah. I can fly all over the place and have a good time. So what prop I did is... I, for propeller. Yes. So yeah. what I did is I flew really high, which gives you sure. time to sort out problems if something goes wrong. And I practiced yeah. an acro move, an ac like an aerobatics move. And sure. uh, you know that so you scene kind of like, where you drop You kind it? of learn to do a somersault in the sky. Yeah, yeah. But this okay. particular one involves like spiraling down. So the wing is flat, but it's turning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've done it without a motor a bunch of times, with a motor a couple of times. But I just sort of upgraded wings to something more advanced, and it spins faster. And to my surprise, the wing spun fast, and the pilot didn't. So... Imagine being on a swing set, but the whole contraption mm -hmm. swings and the, and the, the swinger himself doesn't keep up. And like mm -hmm. I said in the video, I'm calling them risers, but you could call them the swing set chains. Mm -hmm. um, the first half twist is pretty resistant. Like you can keep up, but then once it gets fully twisted, well, the other twists come easily. And when that happened, it started pulling in the wing and then I get in what's called a nose down spiral. So I'm just like, I don't know how to, how to demo it, but I'm, Facing down, it's the fastest you can go down, and it's spinning, and it's a big problem, and it's pulling a lot of Gs. Uh, people die from this. One of the bigger killers. Someone just died from it a few days ago, and uh, she was a professional pilot. Like she didn't just suck, but she blacked out and stayed in that nose down spiral all the way to the ground. And a reserve is a parachute, so I I, I took my reserve parachute and I threw it, but because I'm spinning around like that. It got caught up in the wing or the lines connected to the wing. So the goal the is to throw it, and then it, it like what deploys and pulls you out or something exactly. like that. Exactly, you throw yeah. it. The parachute you're trying to get. Catches... What are you trying to get out from under your? Why? Why is it a throw as opposed to something else? So it's attached it's, to your hip. He's deploying it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's okay. attached to your side. It's there all the time in case something bad happens, and you pull it off and you toss it far, and then when it gets to the end of the line, the it's called a diaper, but the bag that it's held in goes away and it catches air and inflates so yeah. it's a little you know wad of fabric at first but as soon as some air gets into it it's folded in a particular way to make it catch air and expand sure. he's heading toward the ground at about 50 miles per hour and he's trying to slow that down so he doesn't die <laughs> yeah yeah no I'm, I'm familiar with the general idea of parachutes yeah i'm going yeah. I, I actually have some telemetry on my phone i was going down at 3300 feet per minute i don't know i didn't do the calculation on that but yeah. um, too fast, 3,300 feet per minute. So, uh, And this is similar to Kyle. This is like your parole. You have to do this? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to understand. This was, this was entirely voluntary. 38 yeah. miles per hour. 30 okay. miles per hour. All right, 238. 38. No, 38. So it's, it's too fast to it, hit. It's, it's survivable if you're lucky, but it's easily fatal. Yeah, I, I think that's about right. And uh, I I, the first reserve got tangled in the wing because it's spinning around and we've got this big problem and then the second reserve you, i threw cut it or is it like how does it not then there, tangle there wasn't back? a lot of time i spent a lot of time trying to sort the wing out trying to get the wing to fly again to un i said there were seven twists in there um i got them all out but one and i don't know why but the last twist was just so locked in there i think it has to do with the g's pulling it apart it just it wouldn't let yeah. go. And uh, so that last twist, I, I couldn't undo it through my reserve, got stuck in the wing and the lines leading to it through my second reserve, and it worked. You're supposed to do a, a PLF. So when you fall, you kind of fall like feet, knees, hip, shoulder, and, and distribute that uh, across your body. But I was going so straight down that I felt like I couldn't make that work. And I, I kind of just went feet and then... You'd call it butt, but I'm wearing the paramotor, so it hit mm -hmm. the cage and it's a little bent up. So I might bend it back so, and I replace it. So what did Jackie have to say about all this? <laughs> yeah. You show her that video? We've been feeding in the details you know, yes, over slowly, time. Been trickling information. Yes. Like, 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 at first, at first it, just like, hey, I bent the frame a little. Yeah, at first it was like, uh, so in the field, farmers came by. And they were expecting to find a body. And, uh, you know, they were like, you were coming down fast. 
And I'm like, it wasn't that fast because I'm thinking about the last hundred feet when the reserve worked. <laughs> but uh, they're thinking about the rest of the descent. And they took me to the road and they, I was going to have Jackie pick me up at the side of the road. But then they offered to drive me all the way home. And they, they almost that seemed better than they were waking really nice. the wife. Yeah. Well, she was up. I mean, it was like 7 p.m. But, um, uh, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, not quite, not really waking her. I meant she's, yeah. oh, anyways. she's picked me up a couple of times before, but it's usually motor problems. Like, hey, honey, I landed in a farm, you know, like I, I got it going, but I don't trust it. I want to really, do, you know, look it over in the garage. Can you, can you pick, you know, grab the truck and drive me home? There've been a couple of those. Hey, it started raining. The, yeah, sure. I, so when she when I asked her for a pickup, it wasn't immediately like, man, I threw my reserve, it didn't work. I threw my other reserve, and thank God, like, you know, yeah. that's not how we. Because the text message I got was, I almost died today. Mm. <laughs> I yeah. bet that's not the message Jackie got. No, the message she got was a lot. Hey, Jackie, you know that that life insurance policy? <laughs> it <laughs> almost <laughs> just paid <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> a little rougher than normal. I wanted to ride a ride back if you're not busy. <laughs> no. So uh, we got the ride back. And I'm like, you know, like I think she might have known I threw the reserve when I got home. But like, I don't think she realized. The, the brown stains in the back of your pants? <laughs> <or>? <laughs> it just kind of like I, I sort of trickled in just like how bad it was and how close it was. And that um, it was it's a weird feeling like that night. Right. So I'm at home. Everything's settled in. All my gears in the garage. And. Like, I'm okay. And in my head, I'm like, my, like, it's just normal. Like, all my friends have processed it, said, oh, thank, I'm glad you're okay. And now they're living their lives. It's trash night. How am I supposed to process trash night right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, I j just do it? Like, <laughs> like okay, I guess. Like, it, to me... A really monumental thing happened last night. And to everyone else in the world, it's just a footnote. And I have a friend who's thrown a reserve twice, but two different flights, not, not one in one flight like me. And uh, I, so I've been on the other side of this, and it's just like, yeah, you know, Johnson's good at throwing reserves. That's, you know, he's got a knack for it, I guess. It, it, like, it's not that I don't care. I care a lot, but it, like... Well, I'm, my I, life wasn't diverted like his was. He had a near-death experience, and now I'm on the other foot. The other. Shoe. I'm glad you made it. Can you imagine? It you would just have, be me and Filthy. Yeah, that's there. what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Sexual tension would be extreme. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, we have, our shirts would be off. Half an hour. <laughs> we wouldn't be able to record and release it. Absolutely. <laughs> It'd be no. copyright or flag. This, this would be a whole different kind of show. Like, like we'd, we'd honestly just have to go play some Eve or something yeah, like that. That's right. Some point. Like, we'd run out of stuff to talk about. Tonight's PKA yeah. will be found on Red Tube. <laughs> <laughs> I I get out the hooks, the treble hooks, and I'd be I'd be oh. suspended in here like like, like I'd be like you're just like a spaceship. <laughs> uh, I'd be like a model airplane hanging from a, a thirteen year old's fucking ceiling in here. Just oh, you were right. It's so amazing. I packed the my own reserves. They're right back there. Like I haven't packed them yet. I have a, <laughs> like. I don't know. Like, again, like all day long, I've been in. I talked to um, a very experienced paraglider guy. He actually had had a serious injury, and he's like, you know, you're in that like post adrenaline kind of processing stage, and it's like, oh, he knows. Like, he gets it. He's probably been there half a dozen times, and uh, yeah, that's where I am. Like, I'm not fearful. I was fearful once when a friend got hurt. Like, I I kind of want to rematch. That's what happens when I got it. When I broke my leg. I, for eight weeks, you know, I did rehab and dreaming of a rematch. I, I want to get back there. I want similar conditions. I want the new me to try it. Um, but when my friend got hurt, like that, that really spooked me in in a way that it doesn't happen personally. I don't know. I yeah. can't. I'm sort of getting my arms around the pretty close oh, call you had there, dude. I had my radio on, and while I'm spinning 38 miles an hour, headed to the ground, like I don't make it up six Gs, something like that. What's playing in my ear set is that uh, Bonnie Tyler that I need a hero. Ah! 
<laughs> I'm gonna hear wait, wait. to the end of the Is night. it literally playing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the song that's that's going on in my. But is, when I picked oh up Colin God. today, the song was only two thirds through. Like I, I was like, I will forever associate that song with that nice. event. Yeah. He's gotta be strong and he's gotta be fit and he's gotta <laughs> yeah. be larger than life. And, and like, so I have a I have a helmet on and it's midway through, so it kind of got like tipped forward. And my vision's a little obscured. I can like see the shit in my lap. I need to sort out. And that song is blasting. And it was like literally encouraging to keep going. Like <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of people who give up in this scenario. And like the, yeah. the coaches. If you had a different if you'd had some Johnny Cash on a woke <laughs> right? up Sunday morning with no way to hold my head. But it didn't hurt. You'd be like, uh, well, just let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I I that song and that event are forever linked for me. That I need a hero <laughs> is the time I almost died. Oh, uh, that's good, man. I'm I'm glad you lived. I'm glad you lived. Me too. Um, well, thanks. I, I, I hope Taylor's okay. I, I'm, I'm I hope I hope I hope everything's okay with him. You know, haven't heard from him in a while. Uh, we're yeah, a couple I hours think, in. Now. I think a family emergency generally is less it's, immediate life, like immediately life threatening than that most of the time. I mean, highways or dieways, man. You know, he had to drive. Yeah, and I guess he is moving faster than 38 miles per hour. I guess he was, I wasn't oh. thinking about, you know, granted he's not headed directly at the center of the earth. That is true. That is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I uh, I got your message and I was like, God damn it, that is a ridiculous hobby he's chosen. <laughs> ridiculous. I've always, my dad and I have this conversation all the time because my dad was wanting to get into paramotors 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like 20 years ago, we we uh, we played poker with this guy who was into paramotors and he was like, "Yeah, I got this one for 10,000 and this one for 15." You know, it, like the 15 was a trike, I think maybe. Okay. And we were interested in the trike because we saw it as an aircraft essentially. It's like, sure. it's like why would I want to run when I could ride? And uh, we were we were so close to to getting one of those trikes and just have you know, we got the land to land it and stuff like just like mm -hmm. you do and, and 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 we never did. So I tell him about it and I'm I'm like, "Yeah, he's got the He's got the backpack fan deal, and uh, you know he broke his. I told him about you breaking your ankle and everything mm -hmm. like that, and yeah, he's always asking, "Is like, his ankle heal up okay?" Sometimes you get a, sometimes you get hurt like that, and you never heal up right. And I was like, ah, "I think he had a good surgeon. I think they they fixed him up." He's like, "That's dangerous, man. With a family like that, that's dangerous." He's and I'm like, wrong. "I don't." <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong. I... I was like, "Dad, weren't you driving race cars when I was four? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird that stuff. My yeah. dad did dirt bikes for a while when I was um again again he got back into motorcycles again as uh, as I was in high school or something. And then when I was out in college, he got into dirt bikes again. You know, he's probably in his early fifties, late forties around then, right? And uh, did so we were he was living in West Virginia then and had a dirt bike and brought it up some hill and dropped it on his ankle and broke his ankle out by himself entirely in the middle of fucking nowhere on that and uh, hiked it back walked it back to his trailer, put it on the trailer, drove himself to the hospital and then had a number of surgeries on his ankle from that. He's mm -hmm. like, he was like, I just, he's like, I just didn't look down, didn't look, take off the boot was his thing for that. But like that mentality of like, these are hobbies. These are like essentially things you're doing for fun. Um, and at the same time, they're extraordinarily dangerous in some level. I like so the like, post-accident mentality or, or like I compare it almost to my like on the way down, like, all right, we got a problem, but we got shit to do right now. You know, like I'm in the middle of nowhere. I got, I got to solve a thing right now. And yeah, your mindset changes instantly. Like, like, like you're just like, all right, well, we're in this mode now. You know, there's, there's nothing for it. There's no, there's only plan A. There's no B, C or D. It, there's, there's one route out of this and, and it's time to fucking move forward. Like, like funny, we're, we're essentially I, animals. Like, like we know what to do. I, yeah, I, I, I in my case, so I went to see like plan A was to fix the wing was to fly out of this thing, to get it untwisted. And I, I tried that plan. Okay, yeah, I, I follow now. And I followed that plan. If I started at thirty three hundred feet, I followed that plan to about one thousand. And then it was like, well, it's not making any progress, and it's time to throw the reserve. And when that reserve didn't work, you can pull on the lines that go to the reserve, and sometimes that'll help it like catch air and just if it just catches a little, it usually will catch a lot. And uh, I tried that plan briefly. Call it five seconds, and I'm like, I'm going to reserve number two. And then that plan worked. So, <laughs> like, dude, maybe one percent of pilots carry two reserves. Like, it's mm. not a normal thing. Are you going up to three after this? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> That's what I said. That, that was my text message. It. Like, 
Maybe a third is in order. <laughs> no one, I've never even heard of three on a pair Maybe of just, just It's one funny down though, by your stress ankle. responses. Like my wife's stress response and my stress response are so different. Like she gets upset with me with my stress response. My stress response is essentially like truncate. Like anything that's not important, get fucking rid of it. We don't care. There's not time for a civility about this. There's not time for worrying about whose feelings we're hurting. Like, and like when it becomes like, this is realistically something can get hurt or something like this. It's just like, fucking truncate like clear that shit off the the table because just focus on what's here and now and then she's totally different she like she shuts down a lot more than i do for that and i really wonder like how much of that is genetic or where it comes from for that but it's interesting because like, you're sitting there in that moment being like okay like training clearly helped there like that's certainly something that made sense right mm -hmm. and it's like here's what i'm going to do here's what i'm going to focus on but as you say like people give up in that like different people in different scenarios die from that same thing and not because of a difference in training or skill, but a difference between how they physiologically or psychologically react to that scenario, which is so interesting. Training and, and um, one area where I'm lucky in like paramotoring and paragliding, I have a YouTube channel and, and because of that, I walked into paramotoring as one of the most famous paramotorists around. It's not a big, if you wanna be at the top of your field, choose a small field, that's the secret. Sure. <laughs> but um, because I had a million subs before I started, like it made it e a lot of people who were like legends in this sport would give me time of day when maybe otherwise they wouldn't had. And I, I just have a lot of good mentors who've talked to me about this. And some of their voices were ringing in my head, you know, like th there's one guy, Chris Santa Croce is his name. And he encourages people, throw that reserve, throw that reserve. Today's a great day. You're going to see what the other part of your equipment looks like. Now reserves are a problem. People land, they break legs. They find themselves in the middle of a field with, bones sticking out of their skin like it's usually not the end of your problem it's just a different problem and uh so they like but i don't know i had mentors in my head and and he was saying a lot of people spiral to the ground we don't know why we don't know what they were thinking because they're dead but their their story ends with that and it made me think like you no know, mine can't mm -hmm.